open up by thanking everyone <laughs> for being here today uh, and joining us here in person at the SNAP, uh, whether you're on Zoom, uh, and then the many, many fans joining us on Twitter, YouTube, that we're live streaming from. Thank you so much. Uh, it's no surprise that there's so many of you joining because uh, we're announcing a very special but very bittersweet occasion that is the retirement of an icon, <laughs> a legend, a forever legend of the game, Alex Morgan. You don't need my voice, Tori. <laughs> um, over her distinguished 13-year professional career, Alex has not only excelled on the field with her remarkable achievements. We're talking two-time World Cup gold medalist, Olympic gold medalist, U.S. Soccer Female Player of the Year twice. You guys got the press release. I don't <laughs> have time to list it all out now. But um, she's also made a profound impact off the field as an advocate for equality and just a role model for millions of aspiring athletes. So. This Sunday will be Alex's final professional match, and today we have the privilege of hearing from her directly about her decision and her reflections on such an extraordinary career. So I'm sure I can speak for many of us that we are really grateful to have had the opportunity to witness your game-changing impact on this sport uh, and within our community here in San Diego. So with that being said, Alex, if you have a couple opening remarks. Uh, yeah. this. It honestly feels a little weird because <laughs> um, I, it all just uh, came really quick. Um, not the decision at all, but um, just letting my teammates know, letting the world know um, I wasn't, I don't know, I'm ready for it, but just to go on this emotional roller coaster, it's still the end of something that I have, that has been like such a big part of me for so many years is really hard. Um, we all know yesterday um, my decision, um, you know, was announced to retire from soccer, and um, I'm just so grateful to everyone who played a part, big or small, in my career, and I'm so fortunate that. I get to end that career here in this incredible city in San Diego. Um, it has been, whew, it has been a long time um, of playing soccer, of dreaming to be a professional soccer player when I was younger, um, to then being a mom and seeing my daughter um, just be so inspired by my teammates and just call them her teammates and her best friends. It has um, just been an incredible ride. Um, I'm really fortunate I get one last game with this team here at Snapdragon. I will be playing limited minutes um, this weekend, but nonetheless, it's always an honor to be able to lace up my boots and step out on that field um, for one last time. So thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to try not to be too emotional with um, the questions asked and my answers, but I'll definitely open it up to any questions now. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Uh, we'll start with some questions in the room, and we're going to just limit it to two questions per outlet and then get to some on Zoom. So uh, we'll start with SD Football. I hope my legacy is that I pushed the game forward, that I helped gain respect um, for the women's game, that I um, increase the value and the investment in the women's game, that I helped players and uh, myself um, not only be respected in the game, but have better resources, have be protected, have player safety be at the forefront. Um, have women soccer players do just that, play soccer, not have to fight for so much, so many other things that we've had to continually fight for um, and have had to even before I um, stepped on the field um, with the national team or with my club teams, various club teams. Um, here in San Diego, I just want to represent this city um, so proudly and I believe I've done that for the last two and a half years. Um, to be honest, I was not expecting 
to finish my career mid-season. Um, this came unexpected, and at the beginning of 2024, I wanted to end this season. Um, you know, going to playoffs, winning a championship, you have, you have big hopes for your last year, and um, I, I still have such high hopes for this team, but unfortunately, um, plans don't always go the way that you draft them up, and, uh, and I, I think that for me, it's just being a forever supporter of this team, this organization, and just being forever embedded into this community here. Sorry, I forgot to mention, we do have microphones so that people on Zoom can hear, so um, whoever has the next question, oh, he's ready to go. Alex, uh, thank you for a great career and for coming here to finish in San Diego. What are the possibilities of Alex Morgan potentially considering uh, the coaching area? <laughs> uh, I have not taken any coaching licenses, I'll just say that. I, <laughs> I don't think coaching is in my future. I, ha I think that I've found my calling in um, just investing in women's sports, um, doing as much as I can to give as big of a platform to women's sports as possible. I do that through my media company together. I'm doing that through my foundation, the Alex Morgan Foundation that I launched last year here in San Diego. Um, through other various businesses and investments, personal investments that I've had, one being Unrivaled, the new women's basketball league, 3v3 league that's coming out. Um, so I see that that's where, that's where I will make the most impact. Jonathan, you had one here. We'll pass the mic along, the baton. Hey Alex, uh, Joseph with the Baton Hair Collective. Um, your career is remarkable, uh, but I think what is remarkable uh, even further beyond that is the, the human being that you are and the, the incredible impact you've made on women's sports. Now that you're sitting in this position, um, what do you see as kind of the next phase of that impact and what kind of role do you hope to play in the future? Uh, and as a follow-up question, um, earlier on this year, um, we asked you kind of what taking a bet on yourself looks like this year in the season. And I'm curious, has your uh, answer to that question changed? Yeah, I'll, I'll just answer that one first. Um, I have always been an advocate of betting on yourself, of trying and not giving up. And um, looking back to this year, like it's in no way what I imagined um, through the Olympics, through um, you know the season that we're having here. Um, but in no way would I ever regret um, playing one more year because I've always told myself that like if you don't try, you can't succeed. The only way to succeed is through trying and giving everything and that's all that I've tried to do. And as much as this year has been difficult mentally, physically with injuries, um, left off um, an important roster. Um, it's all part of the character that I've built to you know, respond to things and to overcome adversity. And this isn't the first time in my career um, that things like this have happened and I've always been able to overcome them. And I've always leaned on teammates, on family, um, on those that I've built my support system around to um, to help and I'm you know so grateful that I have such clarity in the decision that I made at the start of this year um, to retire at the end of the season um, yes it's cut short but it it was you know it was a year that I am so grateful for regardless of all the ups and downs and um, that's one thing that I will always say is to always bet on yourself. If you don't have it like in your heart, um, no one can teach you that. No one can give you that. You have to give yourself that. Um, and that's the first leg up on anything. Um, when it comes to my role after soccer, um, you know, that's still, that's still, you know, to be, to be determined. I'm, you know, I'm really happy supporting this team. Um, I really love this team so much. I also love the national team. You know, it's, 
it's a bittersweet way to end, but um, I gave everything to that team for 15 years. And um, just to hear all of my teammates, um, you know, calling, texting, um, writing to me, um, just knowing that we really did grow up together on that team, it's, uh, it's just more than, Honestly, I, I said it yesterday, the return is more than I could have ever hoped for because it's true, I, I had a dream to play professional soccer. I didn't know that I, all of this, um, all these extra opportunities and friendships and um, just love and passion for so many different things would come out of uh, wanting to become a professional soccer player and living out my dreams. So I'm just really grateful and I'm really happy where I am and um, and I'm looking forward to continue growing our family in this city um, and continuing on my various businesses that I just talked about as well. Thanks, Al. Uh, yes, up front here, Abraham. Hey, Alex. Uh, thank you for the time. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit to what it means to have all your teammates here watching you and you know supporting you through this retirement and what was the conversation like when when you told them that you were retiring um i am overwhelmed and just uh so grateful to have my teammates here i had no idea um at all so it's just walking in this room it's incredible to just see the support um that they're showing me today um, just funny enough, I was driving in here, of course, like late and <laughs> <laughs> rushing in and um, the security at the loading dock was like, oh, are you one of the players? And I was like, I'm the player. <laughs> like, I'm just the only player that's here. <laughs> and he was like, okay, yeah, park right there. Um, and then I walked in and I was like, oh, okay, I am one of the players. Yes, it's not just me. Um, but it just was incredible to see uh, my teammates here and um, I think just like having a special team like this and players like that I look in the back of the room that are 16 years old um, to players that are closer to my age some players are closer in age to my daughter than they are to me but having just having that relationship with them just getting to know them and you know, being able to lean on them and vice versa and knowing that we're all peers and we can all learn from each other, that's been the most special part of it all. Um, I may have had more time in the game, but I definitely don't feel like um, I know or are owed more than they are. And, um, and I think that uh, these last couple of years in San Diego, it's just been amazing to have just so many different teammates from around the country, around the world, um, support each other. And, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm just, just grateful. And uh, the Wavers, the Wavers are one of the more attended teams in the league as far as like fans go. Can you talk a little bit to what it means to have helped build such, such a strong, strong fan base in such a short time <laughs> in San Diego? Uh, yeah, it's no secret. What we built um, is special and we have the highest attendance of the league um, for the last two seasons since we've moved to Snapdragon and overflowed at Torero. Um, it's, it's just been amazing to see this city rally behind this team and this team also um, use our platform to go out in the community and want to really dig in and be a part of um, be a part of this city. I haven't been on a team before where I've seen so many players going out to community events, going out to um, you know charities and organizations to lend a helping hand, to want to get more involved. Uh, it has honestly been incredible to all, literally every one of my teammates showing up at last year's um, first gala for the Alex Morgan Foundation, um, which I hope they come again this year. You're all invited. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it, this team is, is honestly something special, but also just the, the people in this city, the fans um, are just relentless in their willingness to support 
the teams here, um, and we feel so loved every single game. Um, and um, you know, soon enough, coming very soon, I will be one of those fans because I'm forever a fan of this team. I think we had one in this maroon shirt over here. Alex, um, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. How old were you the last time you weren't playing soccer? And what, would, what do you think that little girl would think of the career you've had and the journey you've been on? I honestly started playing soccer when I was five or so. And before that, I was going to my sister's soccer games and kicking the ball around, holding the ball, you know, around the sidelines, watching my sisters play. That's a big reason that I, you know, wanted to grow our family is I, I want Charlie to have siblings like that. I want siblings to look up to her. Um, I want a big chaotic family, like, not too big, but <laughs> a chaotic family like I had growing up. Um, my sisters meant everything to me, and they were the inspiration behind why I wanted to play soccer in the first place. Um, just when I look back to that little girl, I just see someone just so competitive, so eager to do everything, so eager to try everything, so confident and fearless. I see that in my daughter now, and, um, and it makes me proud that I've fostered that in a way that my mom did for me and my sisters growing up. Um, I think just raising her around a, raising my daughter Charlie around um, a group of women every day that are so confident in what they do, that just have purpose, have found their calling and, um, and are so like willing and open to share that with her um, is something that not a lot of girls get at that age. And um, it was important to me to bring her on, with me on trips because I wanted her to experience that. I wanted her to see just how incredible these women were, not just in their passion of playing soccer, but everything else they did. Every, all of us as female athletes do more than just play our sport. You know, we're building businesses, we're creating um, our own charities, we're, um, you know, helping our families back home, we're, you know, there's so many different things that we're fighting for, um, you know, equality within the sport, with sport equity, um, you know, doing different advocacy. Um, so there's always just something more to FEMA athletes. And I think that's, you know, so special and unique to FEMA, to women's sports. Um, and being able to, to show my daughter that, you know, is something that as a mom is just, it is honestly the most amazing thing to be able to witness. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Uh, Alex, congratulations. Chris Grove with CBS 8 here in San Diego. Um, what would be your message to young girls um, who are watching this right now, who are going to watch your highlights on YouTube and all the work that you've done um, for women's sports about achieving their dreams, and then also for parents about how they can support those dreams? Yeah, I think, you know, for, for a young girl, there's no secret to success. It's all about hard work. It's all about believing in yourself, betting on yourself, and having that confidence, um, and building that support system, if that's your parents, if that's your siblings, if that's your teammates or your friends. Um, building people and those building blocks around you um, that believe in the same thing that you do. Um, and if that's to become a professional athlete, it's, if that's to make your high school soccer team, whatever that is, um, you need someone around you to help be like, yes, you can do this. Because if you believe it in your heart, you need someone to be able to, um, to validate that. Like, I have not done anything in my career alone ever, like I've always stood on the shoulders of my family, of my siblings, of um, my teammates at times, like we have all worked together to create something special and you know, 
win medals, have success, do all these incredible things, but nothing is done alone. Um, and so I just want young girls to know that anything they set their minds to, they can achieve. And I am trying to help create a pathway for every young girl to see that and to know that you know if you see it, you can be it. And I think that's so important important when it comes to the investment in women's sports is you're seeing so much more women's sports on TV nowadays, um, on streaming platforms, anywhere and everywhere through my media company together um, with the stories that we're doing to, to uplift uh, women in sport. All of that didn't exist when I was a kid. Um, I was lucky to be able to play on an all-girls soccer team, sometimes a co-ed team at school, but an all-girls soccer team, not all women my age were had a girl soccer team. They had to play on a boy soccer team or a boy sports team. So just to see the progress that we've made um, in the last you know, 20 or 30 years, it's incredible. And just in the last five years alone in the NWSL, on the global stage, um, we're seeing everything blow up in the way that we always fought for and we always knew would happen. And so I think it's just, for that young girl, it's go after anything and everything you can imagine. Like, do what you think is impossible. Uh, we'll take a couple more in the room, then head to the Zoom. Johnny, you had one. Johnny Richardson, Everything San Diego. Uh, at what point did you make the decision that this Sunday will be your final match? Um, a few weeks ago, I found out I was pregnant, and um, it was as unexpected as it was. Um, I was so happy because this was what our family wanted um, a couple months sooner than expected. But um, but nonetheless, uh, we were very overjoyed. So I think the last couple of weeks was very stressful, but it was you know consulting with my doctor, um, talking with my husband, um, kind of understanding when could be the last game that I could, or when I could play up until safely, when would be the, the final game, when I would finally, when I would announce and finally, finally be able to tell my teammates in the world. And it just felt like this was the right time. Um, I felt like the last couple of weeks, I sort of lost a step, um, you know, in playing, and I, um, and I felt like, for my body and um, my mind and my heart, this was the right decision at this time. We'll head to the. Oh. Question. What were your team teammates notified? I told my teammates um, on Wednesday morning, so I wanted I wanted them to know, um, you know good 24 hours before I told the rest of the world. And we'll head to the back. Frank, you had one? We'll wait for the mic. Yep. Okay. Oh, Hi, sorry, Alex. Uh, okay. Okay, so okay. It is so warm yeah. in here. I feel it like is. I'm just sweating. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Hi, Alex. Uh, this is Amor Villa for Diario Ask from Spain. And I want you to ask, um, you know, San Diego make a lot of efforts to grow soccer all over the years. But it seems that when Alex Moran signed for San Diego, Everyone take a look on the soccer here and start uh, everything. Do you, are you aware of that? Uh, do you feel like that? Uh, to be <laughs> that person, that spark uh, for um, soccer here? There has been a minor spotlight on me <laughs> in the last 10 years, 15 years, um, that I have felt. But um, I have taken that very seriously. And when I chose to come to San Diego, I did it because of the expectations that San Diego was setting on themselves, the standard um, that this organization um, had from the start. And um, it was important to me to be able to not only share that vision, to be, but to be able to try to make San Diego one of the best clubs in the world. I think that we still have um, we still have a ways to go to getting there, but the fact that you look in this room and see all my teammates, some, these are some of the best players in the world. You look out and see the fans, these are some of the best fans in the world, and I don't think that any other team is pulling in numbers like this week in and week out. 
Um, you see what we've been able to build, the, the amount of trophies that we've been able to accumulate um, from the Challenge Cup this year to the Shield last year to making playoffs in our first year. I don't know that a club in their first three years, first two, yeah, two and a half years, have been able to accomplish what this club has been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. So with that, I'm very, very proud of what, of the part that I've played in that. And um, I want that spotlight to continue on San Diego because I just think it's continuing to go up from here, um, regardless of, you know, this season that we've had thus far. Um, this club is doing things um, the right way. These players are so passionate about playing here like I am. And there's just a lot of like-minded people here at this organization. And um, that's why I'm so proud to play here. I'm so proud to be a fan here um, long after my playing career, um, year after year. Like I will be here in these stands cheering for these women um, play their hearts out every weekend. Uh, last one in the room from Frank, and we need to get to the Zoom. Um, Alex, first off, congratulations, um, and just for all that you've done uh, for the city. But one thing I want to know is this, is that, you know, before every match, I got to assume that you got butterflies, all you guys have butterflies in your stomach. How much of the butterfly is going to be flying before this final match? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting when you're like leading up to such a big game um, and this feels very similar. You're just like in training leading up and you're like, okay, don't roll your ankle, like don't get injured, don't get sick. <laughs> um, and yeah, I feel like there is going to be, I think just not only like butterflies, like you said, like there's always nerves going into a game, but I think this game, I just want to soak it in. I want to be wide-eyed like I was when I came into um, playing soccer when I was playing on the national team when I was 19 years old. Um, I just want to soak everything in. And this isn't just like a celebration of me. This is a celebration of everyone that has done something to help me be here, my family who um, you know, are going to be over 80 people in the stands on Sunday. Um, you know, so many friends who have reached out, so many people that want to watch that game. You know, although it might only be a few minutes or limited minutes, um, I just want to take in every moment of the game on Sunday from stepping into the locker room, getting ready with my teammates. Um, getting my ankle taped for one last time, <laughs> warming up um, one last time and, you know, singing the national anthem on the field um, with my daughter right there with me. Um, she'll be there with me. So I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just all the little moments. It's the accumulation of those little moments that you sometimes just take for granted because that's, those are like the moments outside of the game. Like all we want to do as soccer players, we want to play that 90 minute game, but it's all those outside moments um, that I'll definitely be looking forward to. And then the moment that's my turn to step off the field. Um, yeah, I've, I've just watched so many incredible players. Um, I went to Mia Hamm's retirement game in 2004. Uh, I don't even know how old I was. My mom took me um, because she knew I wanted to become a professional soccer player. And so that like just had a profound impact on me. I couldn't tell you how many minutes she played or what she even did on the field. But the fact that I saw her for the last time ever step on the field and step off, um, just, yeah, it, it like, it changed me. So from that to, to Abby, um, to, you know, watching here at Snapdragon last year, Megan Rapino. Um, play her last game, um, Ali Krieger, and now being able to do that, it's going to be emotional, I'm sure. All right, we'll get to a couple on the Zoom here. Uh, Meg Linehan, if you want to unmute yourself and ask. Becky 
Sauerbrunn, the list could go on. How have they shaped you through your career and changed who you are as a person? Yeah, players like Megan, Becky, Kelly, we played on the national team for 15 years together. Like me and Kelly had our first caps together. Um, you know, Pino and Becky, we, you know, we went to every single major tournament together, um, Kelly included. And so just to think about those players and how they shaped me and who I am, I mean, it's, it is so much. I mean, from not only on the field to having those hard conversations off the field and what we want to fight for, uh, where we stand on things, um, how we differ in our opinions and how that's okay. Uh, it, you know, I, I just have so much to, I've, I've so much that I owe those players, those three players that I played pretty much all of my career with. Um, they're special people in my hearts and um, I would not be where I am today without them three. Um, not only did they have and still have fantastic careers, Becky, still playing, um, but they are just incredible people that opened their hearts, that were vulnerable, um, and that gave everything when they stepped on the field and when they stepped off the field. And I learned so much from at times sitting back and at times um, stepping up, at times leaning in a little bit and at times leaning out. Like there were times where um, I, I needed to step up and I felt uncomfortable and they gave me the confidence and vice versa. So, you know, those, those three are very special humans and they deserve just the world. I, yeah, I adore those three. Jeff Kasuf, we'll have you go next. Yeah, you know, looking back to my career and the start of it, um, I look at, you know, overlapping with the legends of, you know, Abby Wambach, Shannon Box, Chrissy Rampone, um, Lauren Holiday, so many, so many players that had such a huge impact on women's soccer um, globally and here domestically. And that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted to, you know, they talked about passing the torch and I took that and was I ready for that? I have no idea, but I, you know, I helped carry that for a long time on the national team and in doing so I felt like I had a responsibility, not only a responsibility to fight for you know equal pay to fight for sports equity to to do um you know different things in the sport to to uplift and protect players but also to make the game a avenue to be able to play and make a living from from whatever age you want to from whether that's 16 18 20 21 um, I wanted players to have that avenue and feel like they had the resources to be them best, to be their best selves from that age. I felt like, I, I, sorry, I feel like I've done my part in a way that I am, although this year wasn't the year that I had hoped to have, like I'm so proud of the US national team going to France and winning gold. Like that's, that to me is a proud moment because I see some of those players um, playing in that game. You know, I see Trinity, Soph, Naomi, um, you know, I see even Croy coming in and 
um, having a big part within the team when it was a little unex unexpected for her. Some of these younger players um, who have been able to just focus on themselves, focus on their teams, get better every day, have a pathway to be able to do that, have the resources to do that, like that's what I've fought for. And I haven't always, and I've known that I wouldn't always benefit from all the things that I fought for, but in you know fighting for equal pay and attaining that finally was such a pivotal moment in, um, in the history of women's soccer. It created this sort of butterfly effect throughout, um, throughout women's soccer globally that is irreversible um, and that I only see continuing to grow. So, you know, it, as much as I want, you know, I wanted to be there this year and, you know, I, I felt like <laughs> we're in good hands. Like, the future of women's soccer, the now, the present, and the future of women's soccer is in such an amazing place where I have done everything that I've needed to do. I have accomplished what everything that I have come to do and achieved what I've needed to do. And to see those players step on the field and do work and be able to do it at such young age with such poise um, and such confidence, like that's what this is all about. That's why like I am so I'm so happy being here saying, yes, I'm retiring because we are more than fine. We are great. We'll take one more online. Sandra Herrera, go ahead. Um, it's actually funny thinking about coverage when I started because um, I learned like that I was drafted to Western New York Flash in 2011 um, from our press officer when we landed in China with the national team because like Twitter wasn't really a big thing. It definitely wasn't broadcasted. Um, <laughs> there's clearly no service on planes back then. Um, and so it's just to think that um, we've come a long way where we actually won't have a draft moving forward. Um, there, yeah, women's soccer has come an incredible way, but just coverage in general is, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm floored by how, um, how well covered this sport is and all of the reporters and people that dug in at, little or no salary to be to cover women's soccer for so long um, when they did it for the passion because that's what we did growing you know on the national team and early on with um, you know with the WPS and the NWSL we played soccer because we were passionate about playing we didn't play for the money there was no money there trust me none um, so <laughs> It has come a long way, and it is just so incredible to see the new broadcasting rights deal, um, just the new CBA taking place um, with the NWSLPA and the NWSL in terms of um, a new revenue share model um, that really has never been done before, is unprecedented. All of these things that women's soccer is just it's not making a mark, it's building a new pathway that never existed before. And it makes me so just happy that we have gone down a path that women's sports have accelerated in such a fast way and progressed over the last five or 10 years. And I have been able to be out of, you know, I've had a front seat at it these last 10 years. Um, and I hope to continue my part in women's sports, but just to literally be at the front seat and watch 
and be a part of this all unfold um, is, is really amazing and yeah, couldn't be happier. Um, I believe we had one more question in the room. Um, white pants, yeah, Naomi. <laughs> white pants. I was like, who's that? Oh yeah, we need a mic please. Um, Naomi Germa, San Diego Wave. Uh, <laughs> I have two questions. First one, what is your favorite soccer memory? Or a few, if you can't pick one. And the second one is, can we still bring Charlie on a way trip? <laughs> Um, okay, well, the Charlie thing, I don't know. I mean, she has gr grown a liking to Hillary. Hillary so can nanny. <laughs> it's up to Hillary. <laughs> Somehow she jumped to first place in the last three weeks. I don't know. She really put in the effort there. Um, favorite soccer memories. Oh, goodness. Um, I mean... I don't know. It's I, I think one one really special moment is when we had I think we had four or five moms on the team at once um, between myself, Casey, Julie, Crystal, and Ad, and I, you know, growing up on the national team, I had seen Chrissy Rampone have two kids and just make it seem so easy. And looking back, I'm just like, wow, like that must have been so hard. And she just was literally the hardest defender to get around, but also just wrangled two kids after training every day. So I think like that was a really special moment to be able to enjoy with some of my teammates, knowing how far we'd come and the support that we now get as moms. and still as professional athletes. Um, I also want to say some of my best memories is when we won the Olympics and the two world championships. And it wasn't the like winning, I mean it was a winning, but it was just the fact that we were so focused and I mean you can probably attest this from this summer. Um, but it, it was more the fact that you're so like driven and focused and you're like, it's like not robotic, but you're just like in it and you're, all, you're on like, I don't know, auto drive. Like you feel like you're just like, so like you have the blinders on and you're just like looking forward. And then when you win it, like you get to celebrate with your friends and family and you get to be like human again. You're not just like an athlete and I think that's the best part is like we're all humans and we all have like emotions and we all have like vulnerabilities and in sports a lot of times like you're so shut off from that like you're so disconnected from your emotions um, from like the real world because you're so you're like you're just like so driven so Winning those, um, it just, you, you feel like you can be human and you can like celebrate and you can actually just like enjoy and be vulnerable and like smile. Like sometimes you don't smile for like weeks at a time and you just don't realize it until um, you finally get to that end point. And so I think just like being able to do that and just go down, you know, what was it? Broadway or you know in New York and like celebrate with fans and actually just like be like a human and not like the athlete that everyone just is seeing you at as like this robotic thing um, this like thing on this platform um, like I'm just like a sister I'm a daughter I'm a friend um, I'm not just like a teammate and an athlete and I think the special moments was like when we won we got to just be more than just the athlete. I think that's a beautiful way to end it. Thank you, Alex, so much for everything. We'll give her a round of applause. And thank you all for joining us today. We'll see many of you on Sunday. Big day. <laughs>